So we're out here at Bodega Marine Lab and we're doing some undergraduate research on nudibranchs. And nudibranchs are these really cool sea slugs. They're these beautiful creatures. They come in all different kinds of colors. And we're really interested in their predator-prey interactions as they're really important predators in the intertidal ecosystems. All right, so nudibranchs have these really interesting sensory organs that look like antenna on their head. And they use these rhinophores to detect chemical cues in the water that can help them sense other predators or they can help them find prey in the intertidal zone. Global warming continues to be a major issue and it is still vital for us to understand how it affects the intertidal ecosystems and the species that live in it. So here in Bodega Bay, we're really lucky to have two different related species of nudibranchs that are from different climates and their ranges overlap right here. So we have a more southern species, which is Hermesenda opalescens, and we have a northern species, which is Hermesenda crassicornis. And this gives us a really unique opportunity to study how temperature affects the two species differently. But we don't understand how temperature change affects the rhinophores of the nudibranchs. So the question is, how does temperature affect the two different Hermesendas and their ability to find prey? And which species will be more affected by the rising temperatures? So for our study, we headed to the harbor, and with the help of our TA Kenzie Pollard and the Anya Brown Lab, we collected both the species of the Hermesenda nudibranchs. Afterwards, we ran the experiment in a Y maze, where nudibranchs were given two different choices, food or no food, and it was ran under normal temperatures at 12 degrees Celsius and hotter temperatures at 18 degrees Celsius. So in our study, we hypothesized that both species under normal temperatures would be able to find prey and detect it through the Y maze. And we also hypothesized that at higher temperatures, both species would have a reduced ability to find prey, but the more northern species, Hermesenda crassicornis, would have a harder time finding prey and take longer than the more southern species, Hermesenda opalescens. So when we started analyzing the results of our study, we had some really unexpected results. So we found that the northern species, which was expected to be more affected by elevated temperature, actually chose food with a higher accuracy than any of the other groups, but it also took longer for them to find their food. You know, I think sometimes getting unexpected results in research is perfectly normal and it is a really awesome opportunity to ask more questions as to why things didn't go how we planned it. And asking these questions and not always getting the perfect answer is kind of the dirty part of science that you don't always get what you want, but sometimes you end up answering more questions than you thought you were going to. Studying and understanding climate changes is important because many sensitive animals could be influenced by the temperature change heavily, which could impact their survivability and lead to declining populations. There are still many unknown factors of climate change that we don't understand. Therefore, it is vital to continue on studying about global warming and help spread the word about it to the general public. I think it's really important that we better understand climate change and anthropogenic impacts on our ecosystems. And I think the best way to do that is often by studying intertidal invertebrates like we are right now.